Hello and welcome to another edition of Currently in Quincy. I'm Joe Catalano. On today's program, we will learn all about the Montclair Wollaston Neighborhood Association. First, though, we take a look at the weather and the news for you. Currently in Quincy, kind of hazy out there. It's 77 degrees right now. We'll have increasing clouds today and they will bring some showers and maybe some thunderstorms later on this afternoon. It's muggy again with highs today in the lower 80s. The showers are going to linger into this evening. Maybe a thunderstorm tonight, low of 66, but the weekend looks pretty good. Mix of sun and clouds tomorrow and a high in the low 80s Sunday. Definitely the pick of the weekend with abundant sunshine, mild temperatures, pretty comfortable humidity. High Sunday again into the low 80s. We're starting to Heat up again on Monday, hazy sunshine, warm and humid, and a high Monday in the upper 80s. Looks dry, though, into er, the early part of next week. Again, we have a hazy sunshine, 77 in Quincy right now. Checking news for you today. Some progress is being made on a new early education learning center in Quincy. Mayor Thomas Koch says he expects the Rick de Cristofaro Center to be ready late next year. Upon the recommendation of the superintendent and his team, uh, make decisions on, okay, when do we actually start? We'll probably take some time with open houses to show the families that currently go out of district uh, and get them signed up. We'll probably begin moving some of the folks from Delicieza over mm. uh, and then have a fairly robust summer program next summer. And then next September, um, a year from this September, then, you know, will be a complete opening. And uh, my guess is we'll have a full building before we know it. City purchased the building on Old Colony Avenue from Eastern Nazarene College for $6.8 million and is investing $30 million to create that new center. When completed, the new center will serve approximately 300 students in pre-kindergarten through eighth grade who need significant support in communications, academics, and social and emotional development in small, specialized classrooms. Well, the Quincy City Elections Department is preparing for the November 7th municipal election. Now that the ballot has been set, 20 candidates have qualified to appear on the ballot this year after 25 had taken out nomination papers. City Clerk Nicole Crispo says it's the first time in a long time that there won't be a preliminary election. Due to um, the slate um, being being, you know, not forcing into a preliminary, um, we, we are going to go right to November. Um, there wasn't enough people um, to, to force the preliminary for uh, the August 29th date that we had. Um, so therefore, we're, we're moving ahead to November 7th. Yeah, it's, it's the first time in 16 years um, for, for me, and uh, I talked to Joe Shea before that, he said he only knew of two other times in history uh, that there was no city citywide preliminary. Crispo says there will be both early and mail-in voting for the November 7th election and that they're working on the early voting schedule now. There are contested races for mayor, the city council seats in wards 2, 4, and 6, and for three school committee seats. A $10,000 reward is being offered for information that will lead to the arrest of a Quincy man who was convicted of violently raping a female co-worker 16 years ago. Now 54-year-old Tun K. Lee never appeared in court for his trial in Norfolk Superior Court when he was found guilty back in 2007. Now U.S. Marshals and state police are offering that reward for information that leads to his apprehension. He faces life in prison. Lee is now 54 years old, described as being about five foot nine with black hair and brown eyes. He was known to frequent the Quincy area and may also go by the aliases Dun Ji Lee and Dicky Lee. Anybody with information is asked to contact the U.S. Marshals or State Police at 1 833 677 3171. 
Uh, veterans and their families are invited to the fourth annual Veterans Music Festival Benefits and Career Expo tomorrow at Pageant Field here in Quincy. The Veterans Voice Network is hosting the event. It will include information on veterans benefits, housing and job placements. Greg Brasso also says that there will be a special presentation about Parkinson's disease. The Michael J. Fox Foundation recently released that after a million dollars, I'm sorry, a million, no, a billion dollars in funding and 20 years of research, they've just isolated the biomarker for Parkinson's disease, which is a huge step in, in, in slowing down the, the, the progression of the disease possibly stopping it, but also knowing in advance that you are predisposed to that gene. We might, the, the, the real smart researchers are putting together a good gene to fight the bad gene. So that's the level that, of expertise that we have here at the event, along with St. Elizabeth's Hospital, Mass General Hospital, really the creme de la creme and and what we've also decided, and I'd love to share it with the with the city of Quincy, that we will open up the Parkinson's Pavilion in this event to anyone suffering with Parkinson's disease, veteran or not, family members, come on down, find out what's available because we have so much critical information that we thought it would be really a community benefit to get this latest and greatest news out directly from the Michael J. Fox Foundation because it's a it's it's a life changer. The free event runs from 10 to 3 tomorrow. We'll also include a raffle for a big screen TV and some other prizes, live music, food and children's games and activities. Well, a Quincy Elementary School teacher who survived a heart attack last fall will toss out the first pitch at tonight's Red Sox game at Fenway Park. 33-year-old Michelle Ramponi spent a month at Brigham and Women's Hospital after suffering cardiogenic shock, likely due to myocarditis. Last October, Ramponi has been a teacher at the Montclair Elementary School for 11 years. Her husband, Matt, the head coach of the boys' basketball team at Quincy High School. Now, the couple live in Hanover with their three-year-old daughter, Ava. The family will be joined by Michelle's doctor on the mound at Fenway Park tonight at 7 o'clock to open up the Red Sox-Mets game. It's our check of news. Coming up, we learn all about the montclair Wollaston Neighborhood Association. That's next. Welcome back. The Coughlins are in the house. Look out. <laughs> Kevin and James Coughlin joining us from the Montclair Wollaston Neighborhood Association to uh, talk a little bit about that organization, what it does, and how you might be able to be a part of it. So, guys, thanks for coming over. Really appreciate it. Great to see you, Joe. Yeah, yeah thanks, thanks for having yeah. us, Joe. Yeah, thanks for having us. You know, there are different associations uh, throughout the city. It's really what makes Quincy kind of unique, a city of small neighborhoods. Uh, mm -hmm. Montclair Wollaston Neighborhood Association is, is one of several that we're going to try and feature on this program in the uh, in the months ahead. So I thought we'd start with one of one of the oldest ones, right, Kevin? Oh, uh, absolutely. Not the oldest, though, but one of them. Yeah, yeah. Um, 1991, okay. uh, on or about September of that year. Okay. Um, Larry Cresham was the Ward 3 Counselor at the time. And um, Howard and Janet Crowley, uh, Janet has since passed, but Howie is still around and very vibrant and active. He's in his 80s. Um, great guy. He's, um, he's our treasurer. Uh, he and Janet used to, um, every time there would be a, a change in, um, you know, the officers of the association, they would swap out. But one of them has always been, been treasurer of the association. Um, uh, but it, it, you know, not unlike many neighborhood associations, uh, you know, the genesis of the Montclair Wallace Neighborhood Association, really, it coalesced in you know, around concerns about the neighborhood and, and the community at large. And development, and probably, right? Development yeah. was a, was a key factor. Yeah. Um, as we've talked about in the past, there, there was, you know, over, you know, th that period of time leading up to the formation of the association, there had been a, a sea change in the northern end of the city mm. you know the, it was you know um primarily rooted in uh, blue collar uh you know factory work yep 
um, you know, uh, Boston gear, um, mass engineering, um, pneumatic scale. Actually, pneumatic scale at one point uh, employed over 600 people. Yeah. Um, that, that company was started in, on or about 1920 at that location. They built a three-story uh, manufacturing plant um, and um, on that site now, of course, is where the Super Stop and Shop is located. Across the street, um, where there's a strip mall, uh, was the parking uh, for, the, for that uh, manufacturing plant. And that was the last of the, uh, the, the blue collar you know, manufacturing yes. plants to go out of yeah, business. Yeah, well, there was, I mean, quite a boom in manufacturing. You know, it was, it was post war uh, sure. industrial production. That's, that's, you know, it was the heart of the city at that time for mm -hmm. many years. And all the cottage industries that that uh, grew up around those. Uh, the Wheelhouse Diner is still <laughs> still in business. Still it's about the last one, I think, yeah. actually, yeah. Um, but the city is, you know, kind of morphed from industrial yep. to more professional, would you say? Right. Yeah. Actually, you, you mentioned post-war. Um, just just a, a fun fact. The Pneumatic Scale Company, they actually packaged ammunition during huh. World War II. Okay. They had a bomb shelter in the basement with a piano. <laughs> is that <laughs> right? In case the workers got stuck there for yeah. a while. Yeah, it was very interesting. Huh. Of course, Zildjian symbol, uh, that's where they were found. Sure. Uh, so what did the association hope to achieve at that time? You know, um, well, there, w there were certainly concerns uh, as, you know, as, as each of these companies went out of business and development uh, was proposed for each site. Um, you know, the neighbors became concerned about um, the density, mm -hmm. height of buildings, traffic impacts. Everything old is new again. Everything old. <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> 32 years ago, right? We're, yeah. we're still talking about it. Yeah, yeah sure. I mean, you look at uh, 105 C Street, a, yep. a recent discussion about the, the change to a Chinese restaurant down, you know, this end of the yep. city. It, it's always been a concern. Yep. Uh, the integrity of the neighborhoods have always been a concern. And okay. that's how we, we came to be. To be. Yeah. Um, so as an advocate for the neighborhoods. As an advocate the for the neighborhoods. Yeah. Um, and, and then we branched out mm -hmm. and um, you know started doing things r like running uh, field days right. at, at Bishop's Field, um, which still continues yep. to this day. Um, you know we got involved with the schools, doing um, s you know scholarships for you know um, you know kids in essay contests. Uh, we did a musical instrument scholarship program. Kids couldn't afford to buy instruments. We would we would go into the sure. Montclair School, the yep. Wallison School. We would supply funds. Uh, to help the, you know, the program provide instruments for those kids who, who wanted to play music but couldn't afford to rent an instrument. Right. Um, and, you know, in, in, you know, right up to the recent time where we've become, and, and, and James really, really carried the ball on yes. this, the, the Zero Harriet Ave. Yes, um, the purchase of the open space property. Yeah, yeah. It, it was, you know, I tried, I tried my best during my time on the council to stave off the development of that site. Um, it's next to an ACEC, an area of critical environmental concern. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, obviously the community at large and, and those streets, Harriet Avenue and the other streets down in that Montclair neighborhood, those folks were concerned about the inappropriate development of that site. But James took that on. And um, ran with it. And ran yeah. with it. Well, because James, now you're president he, of the association, yep. rights for, for how long? Correct. Now? It's been about 11 years now. Oh, is that all? So, <laughs> <laughs> so you were just 10 when you took over, right? for a period of time, <laughs> Joe, but yes. Um, uh, how did you get involved? Obviously, uh, through your dad, but why did you think it was important? Genetics. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Genetics, exactly. Y you know, I think, um, you know, like, like you said, I mean, Quincy's obviously just transformed so much over the course of, of time, right? Um, but the one thing that I don't think has changed is that the neighbors still want to have a voice. They still want to get together, talk about common issues, and I think that, you know, it's really important still, right? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> you know, especially with, y you can look at information online, you can find it on social media, and, but actually being in person with people, and I think we've seen that coming out of the pandemic, people still want that, um, you know, is, is a big driving factor, I think, for for that and trying to organize people around, you know, common common issues. Yeah. So, I mean, getting back to the Harriet Avenue uh, purchase, that really went back to kind of the roots of what the Montclair Wollaston Neighborhood Association was founded on, right? Was mm -hmm. was advocating uh, for protecting the neighborhoods. Yeah. So, did exactly. it work? <laughs> exactly. It did. It yeah. did work. You know, and and I think that's it. It also 
there was a lot of energy yep. around the association at that point, right? Um, so you had a, a development where they wanted to build 65 units or 75 units, Big I think, right? 65 yeah. condos and and then I think 10 townhouses. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, as my dad mentioned, on a on an area where you really don't have much. It's a marsh. <laughs> it's a marsh, right? <laughs> I mean, for lack of, yeah. Yeah, lack of a more scientific way to, to put it. And, and so, like, you think about climate resiliency. You right. think about what th that means for that neighborhood. And the folks in that neighborhood are already suffering from flooding, already suffering from the effects of, um, you know, living by the marsh, right? right? So why, why make it worse yep. um, in that sense? So you had a lot of folks in that neighborhood that wanted to, to come out and speak against that. Um, you know, we started out just by doing kind of a, a petition where we got over 600 people to say, yeah, wow. we don't think this belongs here. Um, and so we just kind of went from there. And thankfully, you know, we had a, a really receptive and supportive, um, you know, government, right? Like the mayor was on board with it. Yes. Ian really pushed it forward, yes. you know, yep. Ward 3 Councilor Ian Kane. So thankfully we were able to partner with them to, to be able to have a really good outcome, which I think brings, you know, it keeps that open space for for the future, right? But but you know the association kind of made their job easy, uh, <laughs> really, because you brought the neighborhood together yeah. and spoke as one voice. Um, so it, 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 I won't say it made it easier, but it, it gave it validity. You it know, did. To say here's, I mean, we can prove this is what the neighborhood wants. You know, because here are 600 people that are telling you so Correct. through the Montclair Wallaston Neighborhood Association. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, and, and we really had a strategy too. I mean, it, it was both from a political perspective, mm -hmm. right, from a community perspective, then also from a legal perspective, too. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we didn't have to see any of the <laughs> legal perspective right. play out, but we thought we had a real strong way to be able to prevent it from happening. Yes. Um, but it's nice to see how the community process came together, yep. and that was, you know, that was what made it work. And yeah. Did the association gain any new members through that process, James? I think we did. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're right now we're we're probably up around 300. Wow. Uh, okay. We no longer accept money. We don't want people to. You know, we used to charge a uh, very nominal fee, but yeah. at this point, it, it's more about having people participate and and become active. So, okay. um, you know, not all those members are active, right? And, right. And, right. And, and even during the pandemic, we kind of took a step back from meeting, but we we still do obviously the events and. Um, you know, where folks want to get together, we're happy to try to support that and, and put on events that are worthwhile. And in particular, recently, what we've been doing is focusing on events for children. Okay. So there are three moms in the neighborhood that have said, hey, can we come together, you know, build some, build some community around having our children attend certain events. We've had two yoga events. We've got one coming up on August 6th, um, which we're, we're excited about. Okay. Uh, Three-part series. We did a dance event. Um, we've had you know, the egg hunts for, for <laughs> kids around Easter. And sure, then, yeah. And then kind of our, you know, um, pinnacle event is the is the Pumpkin Spice Fest, which, yes. uh, you know, my dad is kind of spearheaded for, <laughs> for a long time. It's your baby, right, Kevin? It's mine. I'm not letting it go. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's your signature event. It is. Uh, it's, yes. it's, it's what folks look forward to every year. Um, so, James, who can be a member of the Montclair Wollaston Neighborhood Association? Yeah, so, I mean, we've we've really kind of opened it up. The, the boundaries, um, we, can, we can talk about you know who kind of sits the within the actual boundaries. Yeah. geographic boundaries, but um, you know we don't we don't turn people away. All right. right. If people want to participate and they want to become active, we're certainly happy to have them. Oh, okay, that's good um, to know. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we don't really you know distinguish, and even in our events, we've had people come from Marshfield, Brockton. No kidding. Um, you know, kind of kind of all over. Uh, we don't we don't turn people away when okay. when it comes to bring the community okay. together. So. so what's the process? Uh, how do I become a member? Yeah, so I think our website is on the screen right now, yep. uh, MontclairWallison.com. And so on there, there's a, a, a link that says join us. And Kay. all folks have to do is go on there. And, or they can shoot me a note directly, James at MontclairWallison.com. And um, we're and happy to And you're in? There's no vetting process? <laughs> no vetting <laughs> process. <laughs> OK. <laughs> uh, do you have regular meetings? We did for a long time. Yeah. Uh, we really did take a step back during the pandemic. OK. And, um, uh, well. Well, who didn't, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we tried the virtual meetings for a while, yeah. but it, it wasn't really the something The little squares get confusing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and exactly. a lot of folks don't have access still today, you know? Yeah. Exactly. Okay. So. So um, where and when, um, you know, do you meet, when you do meet? Yeah, so we'll probably start up some meetings in the fall. Okay. Um, we're looking at potentially doing a candidate's night. Um, oh. You know, again, kind of 
coming back to the core mission around giving people a platform, engaging with local government. Sure. So we're in the process of looking at that right now. Okay. Um, and of course, we've got the Pumpkin Spice Fest that we're, we're planning. I think it's for October 14th. It's going to be Fif that. 15th. 14th or 15th, 15th whatever yeah. that Saturday right. is, yeah. uh, we're looking at that date. Okay. Um, so. It's a big fundraiser also, right, for the association? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we have managed to, you know, we've developed community partnerships over the course yep. of time. Um, of course, you know, our, our largest uh, funder is, is Granite Telecom, which oh. came through mitigation money that, um, you know, that was able to <laughs> secure for us, which is which is obviously fantastic, yes. right? We've had that, that funding for a while, and it's enabled us to do a lot. Sure. Um, but... Yeah, yeah Dan, Dan Cork has been uh, a great benefactor as well right? in terms of, terms of the, uh, Dan is ubiquitous, as you know, in terms of his support of, of events throughout the city. Uh, Flag Day most recently. Uh, the fireworks, uh, fireworks funded by him for many yeah, years, yeah. yeah. Um, but he's, he's, always, um, he's always been right there for us when I've you know, reached out to him uh, with regard to that, uh, that festival. Okay. Um, so between that and um, as, as James mentioned, uh, Granite Telecom, uh, the mitigation package, which was you know, a 15 year uh, commitment uh, to donating to the association. That oh, okay. So I mean, th there's, no, there's no, f no charge for any of the events that we, we put on. Right. We've never charged for that. Um, and um, you know, having, having the support of, uh, of you know, these, these benefactors uh, has been you know, critical to us being able to put these other events on. Yeah, yeah, give back to the community. Yeah. Um, you mentioned Bishop Field. Is that where most of the association's events are held? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah okay. right behind the Montclair School. Yeah. 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 yeah, that was actually rededicated, I think, in the early 2000s. I'm okay. trying to remember. Um, but, uh, and that seems to work? That The, the field is, yeah. is it's wonderful. Okay. You know, um, you know and we, tr we just try to make sure that we don't, um, have any conflict with any sporting events that, that happen there. Right. But, um, yeah, we haven't got pickleball, I don't think, there yet, but we, we have tennis courts there. Okay. I'm not sure about the noise from the pickleball courts. I, I hear about that in the news all the yes. time. I don't, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that would resonate uh, too much for uh, the surrounding houses. So um, I'm happy if they leave it at the tennis courts, the basketball courts, <laughs> the baseball fields, and batting cages and other things that That's are That's enough to keep them busy, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. we've got the, the kiddie park, uh, you know, down uh, the end as well. Yeah. So, um, so James, uh, what other events does the association held, hold throughout the year? Yeah, so uh, as I mentioned recently, it's really been focused on, you know, kid kids. events for kids. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And we're currently exploring, as I mentioned, having a, a candidates night as well as potentially just doing kind of a, you know, local event at a restaurant just to bring people out. Oh, to, okay. You know, maybe a happy hour or something like that. Sure. So, yeah, we're targeting the September time frame for that when folks are back from vacations. And okay. Does, does the association have any kind of um, special causes or, 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 or charities that, that they support? So, uh, you know, we've, we've in the past done, as we mentioned, we, we even did scholarships high for high school students. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. We haven't done them the past couple of years, okay. I think, since the pandemic that kind of... No, obviously, it, yeah. it, it affected a lot of different things that we were doing. Sure. Um, but, yeah, we're looking at potentially getting back into that as well. We, okay. we would fund three scholarships for, um, you know, like book awards, yes. really, as far as the monetary amount for kids going off to college okay. or North or Quincy High. So now is there a, a um, government structure uh, for the association? You have a, a board and, yeah. and members? Yeah, we, we have yeah. our officers, right? Um, so I'm currently serving as president for, I think, the 11th year now. Because um, <laughs> you pulled the short straw again? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mo, Mo Palmer has been our oh. VP for, for some time now, okay. I think for about five years now. Um, I'd have to go back and look. Yep. Um, and so, uh, and then... How, got, Howie uh, Crowley is our treasurer, our treasurer. Yep. and I'm yep. the secretary. Oh, you are? Okay. So, yeah. so you're still involved, Kevin. I am, I am. And yeah, I got, <laughs> can't get I away got, from it. I got pulled back in. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> so somebody watching, uh, why should they join the montclair Walston Neighborhood Association? What's um, the well, I mean, there, there isn't a lot of time that you have to put in mm -hmm. to, you know, to participate, um, but it's certainly worthwhile to, you know, to you know, to find out what's going on in the, in the community um, and, um, and to bring concerns to the association um, that maybe we can address. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, we, and, you know, I, I, I'm like the... You brought your... I'm, uh, well, I'm like the historian. So we only I, have a minute and a half left, yeah, Kevin. So. But <laughs> you go back in time and, I, I, you know, I, I have like a, you know, so these are petitions okay. that 
you know, that the association, um, you know, took control of. I yes. mean, and I'll go back in time to when they were looking at um, the city at, at, um, at the time was looking at taking Engine Four out of service. Oh, okay. I don't All know right. if you if you recall that. that. Yeah, yes. that was. Uh, yeah, well, that was the the time where I. I said over my dead body when I was on the city I council, that yeah, too. and yeah. that was in the in the Quincy Sun. <laughs> and, and you're still here. <laughs> and, and I'm still and here. Engine four is still and Engine Four is still there. <laughs> but the, but the association really paired up with with yeah. me, and as it has with 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 each ward councilor, yeah. in in a supportive role uh, to advocate. So it's so. both an advocacy group, but also a community group, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, absolutely. You kind of get both. Exactly. Yeah. Would that be your message to, to folks uh, yeah. if they're considering it? Yeah. Exactly. If folks want to get out, they want to see their neighbors, you know, they want to kind of hear what's going on, then right. it's, a, it's a great opportunity to yeah. do that. So it can be casual or it can be serious, exactly. depending on what's going on in the community. Thank you both. Appreciate it as always. Good to talk to you. Hopefully we've uh, inspired some uh, some new members for you. Yeah, thank Perfect. you. Perfect. Appreciate, appreciate it. Always appreciate pleasure. it. Always yeah. pleasure. Just enough time to check the forecast for the rest of the day today. Grab the umbrella just in case. We've got some showers moving in, maybe some thunderstorms this afternoon. Temperatures in the low 80s. Unsettled tonight too. A lingering shower, mid 60s, but first nice weekend I think since Memorial Day. <laughs> Tomorrow is okay with the clouds and sun, low 80s, but Sunday is beautiful with abundant sunshine, low humidity, and we're getting back into the hot humid stuff again on Monday. Thanks again, Kevin Coughlin, James Coughlin, for joining us here from the Montclair Wollaston Neighborhood Association. Thank Thanks to you. our crew. Thank you for watching Monday here in the program. We're going to learn about the pharmacy technician program at Quincy College. Meantime, check out our website. That's qatv.org. All our latest programs are there. There's news and information, video on demand, live streaming, and much more. For all of us here at QATV, I'm Joe Catalano. Have a great weekend.